Thank you. Good morning. It's great to see you all, and it is so awesome to be in this beautiful country. Uh, we appreciate, I appreciate so much being here and uh, being able to share with you all and uh, the collaboration uh, that, that we've created through an organization uh, that we called uh, TA3. And so uh, I'd like to thank uh, Technica, uh, pr particularly uh, Inigo and Susanna for all the work they've done. It's been amazing uh, getting this Congress together and, and the work has been just, just awesome and the experience has been great. So um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So again, I, I, I really want to thank you and the collaboration uh, opportunities that we have. Um, I, I'd just like to uh, start talking about the digital transformation of manufacturing education that we've undergone uh, at, at Ivy Tech Community College in Indiana. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the college and then the state and uh, then get into the, the transformation itself. But, but I wanted to quote one of our, uh, our ancient writers, Mark Twain. It's over 100 years ago. And Mark Twain wrote that no one likes change but wet babies. And, and that is so true. Um, anybody work with faculty? And, and nobody likes change, right? Faculty don't like to change their classes. And so I think that, um, it, that we have to get to the point, at least in my school, where we embrace change just like wet babies embrace change. So with that, I think we'll uh, go ahead and uh, get started. Let me see if I can advance this slide. Okay, so um, Ivy Tech Community College is Indiana's community college system. It blankets the state of Indiana. It is the largest community college uh, singly accredited in the United States. Uh, we are the largest college or university system in Indiana. We have 19 campuses and uh, 40 sites across the state. Uh, we deliver education to over 75 communities and we also work with about uh, 6,000 employer partners and our um, student population is around 160,000 annually. Uh, we do a lot of different content delivery now that uh, we're post, sort of post-COVID, and we do in-person, virtual, and, and online. So uh, of, of all of these campuses and sites, there are 22 uh, advanced manufacturing labs on those, you know, on those sites. Whoops, wrong way. Okay, so Indiana. Indiana is in the middle of the United States. It is the crossroads of America, and that's what uh, that's what we've been known for. And and all of the major, a lot of the major interstates cross there, and um, that is the reason, really, that we have such a concentration of manufacturing in the state, is because it is about a day's drive from most of the population. And so you can get to um, Colorado in about 24 hours, and then you can get to most of the East Coast. And so, um, so it is the crossroads of, a, of America, and, and we have a very, uh, very high concentration of manufacturing as a result. And so that is why we have a huge school of advanced manufacturing, engineering, and applied science. And that's the school that I head up. And we have about 10,000 students annually in, in our labs, in our 22 labs. And we have a real focus now on digital technology. And these are very high wage, high demand careers. And my programs include things uh, like uh, aviation manufacturing and aviation flight and um, also agriculture and biotech. Uh, automotive. And so our real mission at Ivy Tech is to develop uh, students and, and uh, uh, potential employees and current employees for the workforce and then to also uh, develop for university preparation. So we are uh, very focused on credentials, and our theory is no credential gets left behind, so I can show you how, how we've been doing that. But just to give you some idea, many of you may have heard of Purdue University, uh, which is a big engineering school, a technical school. Purdue University pro uh, provides the state with the potential for 572 graduates annually, and our college provides 1,168 on average. So we provide most of the manufacturing workforce uh, for the state, and um, 
And so we're, they're very dependent on, on Ivy Tech across the state. Now we do provide other certifications, things like Siemens and others that, that we provide credentials for, but those are, are basically degree uh, credit options. So our high wage, high demand careers, eight out of those, eight out of the top 11, we use apprenticeship strategies uh, to train and the median salary for our three year apprentices is very high considering that the average in the state is about 39,000, which um, for, for all the sectors. So manufacturing in Indiana. Um, Indiana is the top manufacturing state in the United States, and a lot of states like Wisconsin would like to argue that statistic, but uh, we really think we are the are top statistically um, in, the, in the country. 30%, sort of like the Basque country. I heard someone say in Basque country that uh, the higher 20% range uh, was their gross domestic, domestic product for manufacturing. Ours is about 30%. And so manufacturing employs more people at a higher wage in Indiana than any other sector. Uh, we have a concentration of vehicle manufacturing in Indiana, uh, Toyota, Honda, um, you know, are some of the big names. Uh, Cummins Engine, so we have a lot of, of component part manufacturers as well. And you can see at the top slide, um, you know, that's where manufacturing was when, when Mark Twain uh, had his quote, and, and now this is where we are today in, in Indiana. And I can show you uh, some of the lighthouse companies across the country that, that we aspire to train for. And so uh, we have some medical device and research and development um, and production companies in our state. Our northern part of our state, there is a city called Warsaw. It is the uh, orthopedic capital of the world. And uh, they have more uh, orthopedic manufacturing companies there than anywhere else. You can actually uh, get your hip or knee customized to be replaced. Um, we also have a lot of drug research with Eli Lilly and uh, Dow Agra. We have some, some food research and production. And that really gets us into a lot of challenges and opportunities for the state. And being the manufacturing state, we have about 15,000 manufacturing jobs that are open currently in Indiana. And we have 850,000 that are go unfilled in the U.S. And, and the real challenge for us is recruiting students. So the reputation of manufacturing as a career is really kind of negative. It, it, it's back to that first picture in the previous slide when everyone thinks that that's the Henry Ford manufacturing. Uh, and, and it really is more <laughs> the uh, sort of Star Wars manufacturing. But uh, in an empowered workforce, one where we have very, very little unemployment, we have basically no unemployment in the state, um, it, it is very difficult to get folks recruited into, um, into this field. To go into medicine all day, into health sciences all day, but, but not into manufacturing. So, so we've got some real challenges there. We've also um, got some challenges in needing to support the digital changes that are, are in, in manufacturing and across the globe. And so I think it's really interesting at some of these statistics uh, as I was looking through, you know, trying to, to give some perspective on uh, where we are. But as, as my students, most of my students work full time. And so they go to school part time. But for those who work or who don't work full time and they do go to school full time, Think about 90% of the world's big data was produced in the last two years. So my students who started two years ago will now graduate with 90% of the world's uh, big data that didn't exist prior to that. And so another interesting thing is the capacity of their computers. You know, I just bought a car in, um, in the spring. My car is now outdated because the technology in, in, compu in the computer is so much higher um, than, than my car. So it's, it's a really interesting time for us in education as we really have to uh, ramp up and, and stay on the cutting edge. So Education 4.0 really must the now support Infinity Dotto. The fourth industrial revolution Infinity technology Dotto. is really here's changing some lighthouse, the game. Uh, companies there will be a fundamental that demonstrate shift that. in what consumers want and need. They want it faster, they want it customized, they want it personalized. So all of your value chain has to be designed accordingly. 
Almost all companies are doing something around digital and analytics, but many of them have not really found a way to scale. Companies are stuck in what we defined as the pile of laboratory. They are trying thousand flower blooms approaches and are not very focused on how they are really creating early business impact. For the very first time, advanced manufacturing technologies are helping companies transform the value chains end to ends and develop new business models. Lighthouses are the most advanced factories in the world, so are points of lights for the broader community of manufacturers. We define by three W. One is a work reduction, how to be leaner, and one is a waste reduction, how to be greener, and worry reduction, how to become worry-free. We are changing almost all of our product definition, configuration management, ERP system, to be faster, that's the thing. They are hyper-connected, which allows them to have all the devices synchronized and be able to make the most out of the data. We decided early stage to focus on robotics, on sensorics, on analytics and on visualization, all that embedded in an end-to-end -end connectivity environment. We are more efficient in terms of maintenance, in terms of deliverable, in terms of reliability. We have seen benefits in terms of cost savings. We have seen opportunities to accelerate product introductions. We have seen the capability to actually upskill our people. Every year we train our workers on data sharing, information, performance improvement in production, and then we train them on the usage of the technical tools, the digital tools. We want to leverage digital to augment their capabilities, eliminating the unsafe, the repetitive, and non-value added tasks of the supply chain. There's huge benefits on the sustainability standpoint for being a lighthouse. We're able to very accurately understand what our waste is. Um, and that's not just uh, material waste, but also energy waste. There's a nimbleness and there's an efficiency that comes with applying these principles that today make business sense. They will soon be required in an economy, in an environment, in a world that is cycling much faster than it is today. There is room for companies to be working together, learning from each other, and establishing new partnerships. So no small task to get to, to, get to that level. And what really it's going to require, and, and, uh, and I'll talk about, is the, the technical skills, of course. But, but also there are uh, soft skills, basic skills. And the basic skills have changed uh, to, to reflect the need. So, Back to um, trying to get to infinity.0 because the, of the rate of change of technology, uh, it's not going to stop. And I think someone yesterday was talking about lifelong learning, which was a catch term that we always used to use, but, but it truly uh, is uh, going to be the future. So these are um, the actual components of Industry 4.0, of the fourth industrial revolution. And so as we, as we looked at each one of these and, and how to incorporate them into, into a curriculum that, um, that was aligned with our employer needs, because one of our basic missions is workforce development. Uh, so, so what we did was we, we thought about how, what are the skills and then what are the delivery methodologies uh, to prepare the workforce of the future. And so what we think in working with our employer partners and in working with our students and some of our other colleges across the United States is that, that students and employers will want to stack credentials. They will want to stack them up to pathways. So get uh, small amounts of credentials, come in for a week and master one, uh, one micro-credential and then stack that onto, uh, onto a career pathway. And so we have to have credentials that are compatible with our current programs. They have to be able to stand alone. They, they need to be add-ons so that if someone is in a business degree, for example, and they want to add um, a logistics or, or supply chain certification, they can do that. 
And then how do we embed those into our curriculum so that we can truly provide uh, students uh, some, some on and off ramps to, to, getting, uh, to getting their career pathway? So we needed to crosswalk those as well. And so, so we've done a lot of that work and you can see that on our website. I'd be happy to share that with you uh, if you're interested. But, but I think the most, uh, the most challenging thing for us has been this blended delivery. And how do we uh, incorporate e-learning and simulations and virtual reality and everything into, uh, into our curriculum? And, and yesterday, uh, we, we visited a site, uh, one of your campuses, um, Miguel Altuna, and it was just amazing how, how they've done that as well. So I think that we're all kind of trying to look at what are those methodologies that will not only, um, you know, provide that delivery, um, that blended delivery, but also attract students. Uh, so that stackable progression for us looks like this. So we have these industry recognized certifications. They can be uh, Siemens, they can be FANUC, they can be um, the new ones we've just done are SACA, the Smart Automation Certification Alliance. And, and we take those industry recognized cert certifications, which are third party certifications, and we stack those up into a certificate, which is an 18 credit hour credential, and we stack that up into a 30 credit hour credential and, and on into an associate degree. And those associate degrees transfer into universities uh, in Indiana. But, but the real, I, I guess, um, thing to remember here is that we have to give credit for everything. We have to create those pathways uh, that students can progress on and move up, uh, gaining knowledge for their employer and also to move up in the organization. So again, this gives us multiple on and off ramps. And so this is some of our credentials and, and I'll just mention a couple of them. So FedEx, for example, uh, is, is uh, very fond of the certified logistics technician and that's a short term credential that's also crosswalked into our and crosswalked and embedded into our degree credit program in supply chain and logistics. Um, uh, Cummins, Cummins Engine, likes the certified production technician, and that's crosswalked into our advanced manufacturing degrees. And then the Smart Automation Certification Alliance, a company um, in, in Indiana that's owned by uh, France, Farisha, has, uh, has helped us validate those credentials and is, is very fond of, of those. So it, anyway, it gives us a lot of on and off ramp for students and students can return with those credentials and walk them to degree credit. It also gives us an interdisciplinary option. And so we, we have a way for employers to actually customize degrees. So they come to us and they say, well, you know, in, in Farisha, the, the, the uh, industrial maintenance person needs three uh, mechanical classes and two electrical classes and one cybersecurity class. And, and so they can actually customize those and, and we can transfer them on into higher level degrees. So this is really the fourth industrial revolution. We saw this yesterday and, and our employer partners are somewhere uh, between the third and fourth, some maybe even into the second industrial revolution. I'm sure that, that you have some uh, that are different. And, and I guess the point really is how do we, um, you know, how do we have curriculum and have um, those students who, who are trained for current uh, jobs that are in the third industrial revolution and those who can then uh, progress on into the fourth industrial revolution. So we work really closely with our employer partners. And this is another organization that, that we've worked very uh, hard with. It's uh, the Smart Automation Certification Alliance. It's, it's in the United States and it is uh, also in a couple other countries. But what we did was we worked with employers from all over the country. We worked with Boeing, and, and I'll show you a list of those shortly, but, but we came up with a skills checklist. Very technical skills, not the basic skills or soft skills or any of those, but very technical skills. And we came up with classifying those into four four levels, and it's basic ops, of course, all the way up to the industrial internet of things operations. And so once we had that list and we had it parted out into those, into those levels, 
what we could do is, you know, after we partnered with the, the teams to work on it and then actually got that into credentials and into standards that could be held by SACA, much like an apprenticeship program, uh, then we started to educate our faculty on the need for those certifications. And I have faculty that haven't been in industry for 20 years. They've been in education. So, so how do we get them to understand that, that they need to embrace this change? And so faculty trained, and, and we needed to get them trained and certified. And we have, um, our, my ratio of full-time faculty is 25% full-time, 75% part-time faculty or adjunct faculty. So we have lots of faculty that, are, that don't work full-time. Um, that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because they are in industry and, and working usually. And it's a bad thing because we don't have them full-time. But... But anyway, how to get all of those folks on the same page and get their, their skills up to where they need to be. So that's what we had been working on and then getting those certifications embedded and, and getting the curriculum created for them to be delivered standalone. So I'll show you kind of how we did that. Whoops, these are some companies. You may be interested in seeing those. So they, again, there's some companies and there's other colleges. One of our, our big partner colleges is Gateway Technical College in Kenosha. Uh, they have a partner called Foxconn, and so we all worked very closely together to really uh, ensure that, that those, um, those competencies were agreed upon and were aligned with the employer needs. So here's the checklist. Now that's really touchy. So here's the checklist. So what we did was we sat down with employers sort of in a DMAIC kind of, um, kind of educational academic format and we said, okay, so really what is it for this 4.0 technologies that you all need? And so this is what everybody agreed upon eventually and what we came up with. And so then in digging down deeper, what, what are the objectives in each one of our courses that match or cover those competencies? And so we worked with SACA, and they came up with, okay, their associate level one, which is the basic ops, as you remember from the other slide, covered what's in blue. So we looked at our curriculum. We have, currently have curriculum to cover what's in blue. So we felt good about that. So then we went to the associate level two and, and the skills that were grouped in there through the SACA certifications. We felt pretty good about those in green and thought we have some, um, you know, we have most of the, of the competencies there in our curriculum. However, we did need to upgrade it a little bit, so, so we worked on that. And then we went to, um, to the robotics and automation, and, and we have a lot of that already in our curriculum, but again, it needed to be upgraded, so we were able to, to look at upgrading that. Then we got to the industrial internet of things. And that's where we struggled. So we have all of these competencies in red that we really had very little curriculum for at the Industry 4.0 level. Again, things like data analytics and uh, AI and machine learning, all of those things that, that we just didn't we just didn't have. I mean, we were still in the, the uh, um, level three. Um, so, so we weren't in, in the fourth uh, industrial revolution yet. So we went back and we looked at our curriculum. We said, okay, we don't have that. What are we gonna do? And so we're developing a new degree. And we just got that new degree uh, developed and implemented um, using these SACA credentials. Uh oh, that's not. There we go. So uh, in working with SACA, we also have a company in, our, uh, in Indiana called Amitrol. You may be familiar with Amitrol. Amitrol does a lot of our e-learning and does a lot of the simulations. And you can see those simulations that are on their e-learning modules are extremely realistic. And um, you know those, those standalone credentials have been very well received by employer partners. And, and then we stack those on into our degree programs. So then we had the labs to upgrade. So if you, if you look at this picture, this, this is a typical mechatronics lab. Each one of those is a, it's, its own individual component or standalone, uh, standalone function. But putting those together in that systems integration uh, uh, capacity so that we could actually address all of those competencies in red. And so um, we had that sensor, or we had that level, so we added that sensor level and uh, we were able to do that in a lot of our labs across the state. Uh, then we added that control automation level and on up to um, the enterprise level. 
So now most of our labs can be controlled with a cell phone and they have all the data uh, that, that comes in for, uh, that can be analyzed. But some of our labs weren't to that level, and so we had to go to this advanced uh, smart technology uh, trainer. And so I'll show you one of our labs um, toward the end of, of the presentation. So this is where we are right now. We're getting all 22 labs up to that level. And so if you look at the process that we went through um, in implementing uh, Industry 4.0 as, as a technology and as, as, a, as curriculum, industry kind of goes through the same thing. First they have to understand it, then the companies are in various stages, and then they implement a process and measure it. So it's similar to, to Lean Manufacturing and Lean Six Sigma, but what that actually does for us as colleges is that creates an even greater skills or workforce deficit because now they've implemented these processes and, and the skills gap that was there before is now exacerbated. Um, so so in, as education, you know, we, we go through and educate faculty and staff and, you know, it's, it's staff too because I have to go to my president and say, I need two million dollars to, to upgrade these labs or I need, uh, you know, a million dollars for one lab. So, so it really is an educational uh, kind, of, kind of process as well. And then we, we have to remember that we can't dump the other technologies just because we're getting these greater technologies because we still have, uh, we still have industry that are very, at various levels. So then upskilling faculty and, and getting these new degree pathways is also part of the process. So again, we're actually preparing students here for infinity.0. We don't know in two years what the computers are gonna look like. We don't know what big data is gonna look like in two years. So if my student starts today, I don't know what they're gonna need in two years, but I know that it's going to be a lot more than what they need now. So, so we actually have to deliver um, education in that, those short competencies. We have to stack that and we have to provide for upskilling and certifications. And so we have this constant engagement with industry that really does make us flexible and nimble. But, but right now I'd like to show you this video of not only uh, our lab, but another lab uh, that we, with a partner school that's been upgraded. And this is what we're gonna do for all our labs. So you can see this is the mechatronics trainer. This is the autonomous uh, robot uh, that, that comes around and uh, brings parts. And um, this is Elkhart, Indiana. It's not far from Warsaw that I was told you is orthopedic capital of the world. Um, so what you don't see is people. This is Kenosha and Gateway in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, not far from Chicago, actually. But uh, you don't see people, and the people are doing the programming. Um, you know, it's it's you know, as one of the the lighthouse companies said, it's waste reduction, it's work reduction, and uh, you know, it's uh, it, it really is. I mean, we we really are training for those for those positions with this equipment. So again, our partner is an, an Indiana company. Um, obviously, we use them when we can, but, but the conveyor system, it is, there's a supply chain log logistics conveyor system as well that we've been using um, in training. So it's, it's, it's almost hypnotic to watch when you're standing there and, it, and it's moving and the students are preparing it, and you can see them sort of over in the control room area. So there's software that goes along with it. Um, it students truly are able to control it uh, from their cell phone, which is really kind of cool uh, for them. So again, we're preparing the workforce of tomorrow, 
and we are one of the first, if not the first, college in the United States to develop this smart manufacturing and digital integration degree. I know here in, in some of you in Spain have, have developed that, and some folks in Europe have developed that as well. It is based on those 19 uh, total certifications that we have with SACA. Uh, OSHA is a safety certification, and of course we have FANUC robots uh, as well. So, um, so we are uh, working very closely still with um, with our uh, SACA folks and our SACA partners to ensure that things stay aligned. Um, but, it, but it really is, it does give us an ease of upgrading, having these certifications that we base curriculum on, because as a certifications upgrade, then you can upgrade your curriculum quite easily instead of having to go back through and redevelop a curriculum. So the, the digital transformation of education for us has been this constant engagement with employer partners, uh, it's developing these certifications and, uh, you know, upskilling labs and faculty. And we develop and, and stack the short-term credentials. We give a lot of prior learning assessment because we have the e-learning uh, option that we can, we can uh, kind of uh, help folks prepare a portfolio. We utilize various modalities. We, we saw some virtual reality yesterday at one, one of our visits. We saw some uh, simulations. We have online learning. We have blended. But this, the focus is really on skills. And so we talked about basic skills earlier. And, and the new basic skill set has to include cybersecurity and data analytics and social responsibility. But it also has to um, include ethics. And a couple weeks ago, um, week of October 23rd, I believe it was, we had uh, we hosted in Indianapolis at Indiana Motor Speed or Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where the Indianapolis 500 runs. Greatest spectacle in racing, um, but. Anyway, we, we hosted an autonomous vehicle challenge there, and teams from all over the world competed in an autonomous vehicle race, and the prize was over a million dollars. And so um, it, it was very interesting that the ethical um, concepts, I guess, that came up as we talked with students about this autonomous vehicles and what that's really gonna mean. And so one of the scenarios that, that we talked with, with students about is the, you know, the algorithms, the way they're programming all of these systems to work together, which is really what smart manufacturing is. It's that whole systems integration piece. And so we, we talked about you know, a scenario where the autonomous vehicle is driving down the road and the owner's in the back seat. And so um, coming at that autonomous vehicle is now a semi-truck. So does the autonomous vehicle hit the semi-truck? Does it veer off and hit the students standing to get on the bus um, at the bus stop? Does it veer off to the other side and go over the ravine and kill, uh, kill the owner, or kill the passengers, the occupants in the, in the car? And those are really the kind of ethical, um, I think, uh, basic skills that we're going to have to instill in, in our students. And someone said in yesterday uh, in a presentation that while we have all these robots, that, that one thing that the robots don't have is heart. And I think that um, that's, that's true, that there'll always be a place for humans because we'll always need that heart in this new technology. So thank you very much. And my email's on there. You need anything?